So, uh, you know, people putting out of oil in it, I don't think it's a good idea because it basically makes the pasta uh, waterproof and then when you put the sauce on it, it won't absorb into it properly, so. Ma che stai a dire? <laughs> you, you, you are trying to change the way pasta is cooked. Look at that pasta over there, look how much is that. Look at that pasta there, dying. It's dying watching you. And some tomato sauce. This is called Palmy. I guess it's British. <laughs> Italy, if you're listening, you need to do this. This becomes potentially a new national dish, so you don't have to copy like New York style pizzas and stuff. Wow. In this video, we are reacting to spaghetti in meatballs by the barbecue pit boys. These guys are incredible with the barbecue. They make incredible recipes. I love their channels, but this is the second time they do something bad to Italian food. First was porchetta, but I reacted to their porchetta. They thought it was a good porchetta. Oh, no, I don't understand. Why you guys, whatever you are in USA, have to destroy Italian cuisine? What did we do to you? And now they're making spaghetti in meatballs. Cooking spaghetti now, what is he doing? What was that? What is that? No, water. <laughs> what was worried? What is that? What is that? Is that MSG? MSG is salt on crack. Okay, the barbecue is ready now. This is a Weber. Oh, he got spaghetti. Okay. All right, that's all taken care of, so. Um, we're gonna cook this uh, bit spaghetti and meatball. Spaghetti and meatball? I mean, you love spaghetti and meatball? What do you love about it? Ooh, 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 ooh. Wow, it's got pomi, tomato paste, it's got pomi passata, that's really good. It's got a wine from Abruzzo, where I'm from. It's got, I guess, a good extra virgin olive oil. It's got good products there, so what is it gonna do? Pork and, and, uh, and beef. Uh, you could put veal in here as well, but I don't... I like veal, I like veal. How many veal? So I've got some ground pork, which is about 70, 30, and uh, it's got a high fat content. And this stuff here, this is about 88, 12. That's the best I could get. And okay, well, he knows his meat and talks about his numbers. And doesn't have a lot of fat, so adding the pork's gonna add a bit of fat and flavor that it... Oh, I always put the pork in my... In my meatballs, it's so important to have pork. But yeah, I like pork and veal. And we've got some spaghetti going on here. So we've got a pot of boiling water going on and that water is about as salty as the ocean. So we use them in Chinese. I didn't know if it was salty, but anyway, there's not enough water in there, my friend. And why are you boiling the spaghetti? Nothing else is ready. Why are you cooking the spaghetti, huh? It's like if you're cooking the meat and the charcoal is not on yet. How can you cook it? So, uh, you know, people putting out of oil in it, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea because it basically makes the pasta uh, waterproof and then when you put the sauce on it, it won't absorb into it properly, so. Ma che stai a dire? <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> you're trying to change the way pasta is cooked. What did you say? I'm confused. Just boil the pasta at the end when the sauce is ready. You mix it with the sauce, the pasta will absorb the sauce and enjoy it with some cheese. Ma che dici? Where do you get this from? See all these videos on TikTok are confusing people. All these people that show you how to use the pasta with uh, no boiling water or how to do it in the casserole. You guys are going crazy. This is really uh, affecting you guys. Stop watching TikTok and all these bloody casserole pastas. Stop it. Get some help. Just let them spread out. And that's probably gonna take about 10 minutes till they're ready to, to take off, so. Ma che dici, ma che dici, ma che dici, ma che dici? Mix this uh, pork and beef together and we're gonna give it some seasoning. And I'm using our SPG, which is salt, pepper, garlic, uh, fennel, um, paprika. So there's a, a few uh, complimentary things that go with the, with, the, uh, with the style we're cooking. No, it's not enough to make meatball size. Then I think this is using good ingredients. Guys, you have to go and try my Italian meatballs recipe. It's really good. Tender, full of flavors. And I put lots of ingredients in there. Okay, I'll make it a very good meatball. So these guys so far are starting well, but I don't see the ingredients I use, so. And we're gonna put into that a uh, about a cup of uh, panko. 
Okay, lots of people like to use panko. I like to use uh, Italian breadcrumbs, but uh, panko does a very good job too. So to add, add a bit of this, you can use breadcrumbs. Panko is good, I like it. Uh, breadcrumbs also work. Choose whatever you want. That's right. And we're gonna need about four eggs, so this is gonna help it all bind together. The eggs are very important for binding together. An ingredient I really like to use is bread soaked in water or milk. Why? Because that is gonna make your meatballs very, very nice and tender, moist, I like to say. It's, it's a secret ingredient, the bread, very important. But here we go, so there's one. Okay. And also gonna put a little bit of this uh, Italian plonk in here just to, uh, just to give it a bit of a kick, and not too much. But this, the panko will help absorb it, so. I never added wine in my meatballs mix, but I don't see this as a bad idea. I'm actually intrigued to try it. And he's using a wine from Abruzzo, a Gran Sasso d'Abruzzo. What you need to remember, guys, when you cook, just because you use Italian ingredients, it doesn't mean that it's, it's Italian, okay? So if you want to make an Italian dish, yes, you use Italian ingredients, but you also need to follow a normal recipe, okay? okay? So you cannot make a dish just like that. So you cannot make Italian meatballs just because you use Italian wine, okay? No, it doesn't work that way. To get and mix it in together. And it's so important to do this by hand. Very important. He's doing the right thing. We're gonna let this sit set aside for a few minutes uh, while we uh, prepare the sauce, and uh, that'll help the flavors absorb. Oh yeah, you need to mix more. You need to mix more. You need to add the garlic. Is that garlic you chopped there? Um, you need to add, uh, mix a lot more, my friend. You want to mix it nice and even, so. There we go. A little more panko. At least you can feel it with your hands if you need more panko, if it's too soft. To me, it didn't look that soft. But if you see, if you believe you need more panko, let's put more panko. All right, this looks like it's about done. Let's check it. I wonder how long it's been cooking for. Sure, it's uh, al dente. <laughs> how can that be al dente? <laughs> al dente means to the tooth. You need to follow the, the, the cooking instruction, cooking time on the packet to make it al dente. Actually, it's a little early, but it, well, for what we're doing with it, um, it's good enough because it's probably still raw because it hasn't been boiled, but I don't know what you're gonna do. It's gonna be in the sauce cooking a little longer, so I'm just gonna take it off now. And where are you gonna put it? The sauce is not done. This pasta is gonna die. We'll get the sauce going. Um... The sauce needs to be done before the pasta is cooked. The sauce needs to be done first. The pasta is cooked when the sauce is ready. Or if you know that the sauce will be ready in five, 10 minutes, then yes, you can start boiling the pasta. I put about a, I don't know, 100 mils of olive oil in here. It might sound like a lot, but. It's always nice to use extra virgin olive oil. I love it, I use it every day. He's using an Italian extra virgin olive oil. Never seen that brand, but. It's part of the flavor profile, so put plenty in and this, this, I've got some fresh rosemary in this bottle, so it's got it. Okay, you put rosemary, so it gives extra flavors. Look, uh, some extra virgin olive oils, unfortunately, they don't have flavors. So it is a good idea to add some flavors. Some of them are bad. Some Michele extra virgin olive oil, I never came across. But he's using lots of good ingredients, like the pomi passata, the good wine. So I, I'm assuming it's a good olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. A nice, uh, nice rosemary aroma built in. All right, so we're going to add to that about six cloves of garlic, and... He likes garlic. He really likes garlic, so I'm sorry, wife. He's not going to kiss you tonight. Figurati, figliolo! Ah! Unless both of you love the garlic smell. Look at that pasta over there. Look how much is that. Look at that pasta there. Dying. He's dying watching you. Now, I'm not going to dice them, I'm going to grate them because it helps them cook down faster. And uh, so I'll just grate these onions. That's a better idea. I should have told this to Gordon Ramsay that made a uh, ragu using chunks of onions. It's not even a ragu what he made. It was a, a beef chick. 
This is good. Well done. And we're going to cook these down. You, you can put some carrot in here if you want. I don't think it needs it. I think there's enough sweetness in the onion. You do need carrots. You do need carrots because the carrots are sweet, okay? You need less onion, less garlic. You need carrots. Carrots are very important in tomato sauce. And extremely important, okay? So try next time. First cook down the onions and then we're going to add to it some uh, tomato, some peeled tomatoes. It's good to use peeled tomatoes. And some tomato paste for that extra tomato kick and some tomato sauce. This is called palmy, I guess it's British. <laughs> Are you British? No comment. It's a good, it's a good, uh, yeah, I know what you say, pomi is British, no. It's not British, it's Italian, it's called pomi, which means pomodoro, like in a short way, pomi. Uh, it's Italian, okay. It's smelling good. Don't worry about the olive oil, the more the better. Yes, I agree. I would have used the paste first. The paste, a little bit of paste, but I don't know what you're doing anyway. One. I, I mean, you're making a tomato sauce, I just realized. Guys, this is like the master chef from New Zealand. This guy loves onion so much, not just from the how much he used, but also from the way he's talking, I can tell. The onion with onion. You're making an onion and garlic sauce. This is way too much, my friend. Come on. You're not going to have enough sauce for all that much garlic and onion. Why do you need so much onion? How can that taste good? Uh, some of the... Some of it. Put all of it. Sauce. This is all about the tomatoes, so don't be shy. No, so put all of it. You put so much onion and garlic in there. I just, real I just realized he's making a sauce. I just realized. And... A better mix. I like this mixing with a knife, that's sexy. So add some uh, oregano. You don't need oregano, but that's okay. And some black pepper. That's a lot of pepper, you love pepper, do you? My God, he's making a catch of pepper. Look how much pepper you use. There we are, keep that mixed in. I love this, uh, stirring with a knife, like a, a very nice knife. So this is, uh, this is fascinating, I love it. <laughs> Never seen it before, <laughs> so well done. But I'm looking at this onion and bloody garlic sauce. It's so disappointing with so much pepper. And the, the spaghetti are dying on the side. It's just, this is like killing every single Italian in, in one video. And that knife is like stabbing us, like that. Poom, 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 poom. It does not respect any rules. This guy is just doing whatever he wants and he thinks he's doing a good job. Um, yeah. The barbecue pit boys made that knife, so I suggest all of you to buy one because I'm gonna buy one now. These guys are selling his knives and I wanna buy it. It's really cool. Don't be shy, you wanna bring out that flavor. You always taste it. A little bit more pepper. In oh my god, you lost pepper. How much pepper are you adding in there? How much? <laughs> oh, why are you putting all that pepper on there? Take that off of there! And just to rich up the tomato, we're going to use this paste. You should have used the paste first, okay? The paste goes first, but it's okay. So, this is super concentrated. It's the same as the other stuff. It's just been dehydrated, basically. Yeah, you don't need too much. You need like maybe two, two spoons. So, give a good couple of dollops of that. Oh wow, it's putting a lot. Uh, I don't like the sauce because it doesn't have carrots, it's got way too much garlic, way too much onion, there is no love in it, there's too much pepper, way too much pepper, it's just wrong. Right, right. Now, the next step is uh, we're gonna start forming up some... So that sauce is done, okay, that's the sauce. Spaghetti are dead, probably they're trying to escape. Where did they go? Air into the, into each of these bowls. When you make meatballs, guys, always have your hands wet. The palm of your hand should be wet. Always have water next to you so you can wet the palm of your hand when you make the meatballs. These have been sprayed first with a bit of uh, spray oil so they're not the they're not going to get sticky and burn. And just create a, I guess, I don't know, three quarters. Of okay, he's making a bowl. He's making a meatball with spaghetti in it. We know that. We know that. And we're already worried about it. But why didn't they put water in the plate so that the, the meatball doesn't get stuck? And the cast iron's good because it's going to hold the heat and. Uh, they should be able to brown the underside of it. Now, ah, right, okay, so he's gonna cook it in the cast iron bowl. This is, where do you watch this? I don't know, guys, what you did during COVID, but this is mad. How do you come up with such a bad idea? So, 
Fill these in. It's concentrated, and but it's really pulling lots of danger to right. details here. And a little bit of Parmesan cheese into the mix. <laughs> what is it gonna do? You should have used Parmesan before. I do put pecorino and parmigiano in my meatballs. It gives so much flavor. We can't do it now. Parmigiano Reggiano. What did you say? Parmigiano Reggiano. Parmigiano Reggiano. Parmigiano Reggiano. What's that brand? Kirkland. What is that? That is. That's from Wisconsin. That's not Parmigiano. Come on, look at that. That's fake. That's fake cheese. I don't know how much you pay for that. But return it, guys. Don't buy it. It's fake. It's like you want Coca-Cola? You buy Coke, Coca-Cola? Yeah, eat it, drink it. If you buy a fake one, it doesn't taste the same, right? You don't like it. It's the same thing for Parmigiano. Is this a good example? Nice there. And take some of our spaghetti. What did you say? Take some of our spaghetti. Spaghetti, is that French? Well, maybe it turned the spaghetti French because they died, so they don't want to be called spaghetti anymore. So you said, okay, let's call them spaghetti, so they don't feel offended. So put the spaghetti in the meatball. I can't believe, I can't believe the spaghetti are dead. So when you cook spaghetti in advance, like a while before, in a bowl like that, you put extra virgin olive oil or olive oil, and then you mix it when it's still hot, mix it with, um, I don't know, tongs. And that way, the pasta doesn't get stuck. Now the pasta is stuck because it's dead. And just lie that in there. And some sauce. He's, 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 he's done this before. Like he really wants you to make it. Like he's really passionate about it. Casting sauce on a dead spaghetti on a fake meatball, on a fake cheese. Why did not mix the spaghetti first? Spaghetti always needs to be mixed with the sauce. Why don't you want to mix the spaghetti and the sauce together? Okay, a little more spaghetti. Let's shake it down. Honestly, I'm, you're going to have tasteless spaghetti in there where you could have mixed it with a bad sauce, but you could have mixed it with the sauce, tossed it together, and give flavor to the spaghetti. Now you're gonna have a chunk of dead, tasteless spaghetti, the sauce in the middle, which is useless, and the meat. I don't understand how can you enjoy something like this. You use top quality uh, tomato sauces. You use good extra virgin olive oil, I guess. A nice bottle of wine. Same thickness as on the bottom, so... You... This is an offend to all, all food lovers. Doesn't matter where you're from. All food lovers, this, this is an offense. This is not even a joke. When I, wrote, I saw the title, I thought it was gonna, was gonna be a joke. It was gonna be something creative, but good, but fun. Because these guys, these barbecue pit boys are really good. If you watch their channels, and I watch all their videos, these guys are good. They're good with the meat. But when they do something like this, they are really offending me. They're offending food lovers from around the world. And I don't understand the concept of this. I don't understand the need in life for this. Uh, even consistency. He's talking about consistency here, like if I care, after watching this, who cares about consistency? And we just fill in the gaps. The time that it takes to do this, you know how much I could have done? How much, how many meals I could have cooked with the ingredients you have in there? And I, I would have made so many people happy. Instead, you're wasting your time filling gaps on something disgusting. And don't tell me it's good. Even if you want to write a comment and say, oh, this is good, you should try. Or don't be stuck to your mind. I'm stuck, yes, because this is terrible. I already know, why would I eat that? I don't want to eat this. Why would I eat something like this? Maybe I can try once. If I'm hungry, okay, yes, it does the job. But I don't want to eat it, eat it ever again. Cut that, it's like Picasso. It feels like Picasso. It feels like he's Picasso. Oh my God, more cheese. He's making a pizza now. The yeah, cheese should go in the meat, the my friend. Mannaggia la misera. Give okay. flavor to the meat. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so we're going to put them on indirect heat. This is preheated. We've got about probably 350, 375 going on here right now. And it's not going to take long. I'll put that down there and make the next one. And we'll be back to uh, baste them with the sauce There's about halfway more. through. 
All right, so these have been on about 30 minutes now, and um, it's time to spin them around just to make sure they, they cook evenly. And I'm going to add a little uh, sauce to the top as well, just to help with that browning. Ma che help with the browning? Ma che fa the sauce? They're looking pretty good. Um, you mean the, the light went dark in here watching this video? The light went dark. Oh, oh he's using a... Yes. He's using a brush. What I'm worried about this brush is that you're going to lose the parts it's of the brush too. So you're going to eat that too. Use a, a, a plastic brush. Don't use this type of brush. It's dangerous to use it because you're going to eat that part. Uh, at the same time, I get fine. Um, what are you achieving by the way? 20 minutes, this? 15 minutes. This sauce is terrible. You're not making. I don't want to offend anyone. I don't know you. All I know is that you guys are so. great with the barbecue. You guys are wonderful cooking meat. Why are you doing this? Let's take a look. Ooh. Nice and nice. Look at that. Jeez. Right, let's get these off. Uh, <clears throat> Look at that. Look how prepared he is. Wow, wow, wow. Come on. And it's a little bit trickier. It doesn't have a lip. There we go. Two. Yeah, this is very dark in here. I feel like I'm bumping Holy scared. moly. There's something now that is going to be hotter than the sheriff's. Please, I'm very scared. I don't know why it's getting dark in this in this room, in this house, outside. Something is going to happen. I can feel it. So please, be with me. Pistol. So I'm going to let it sit for a bit, and um, and we'll we'll crack them open and take a bite. Crack them open and have a bite. Slice this thing up, but of course you know we're stickless for. Authenticity and uh, as our Italian fans will tell you, we make some of the best pizzas they've ever seen. Aspetta, how many of your pizzas here? No, you stick to authenticity? You stick to authenticity? And you. Uh, guys, there's nothing authentic about this video, okay? There's nothing authentic. I really need to go and see these guys making pizzas because he says they make very good pizzas. So let's have a look. All right, so the, light, the angels coming to save me. Thank you. Oh, let's go and see how these guys make pizza. All right. Let it cool just a little. Oh, well, that, that pizza looks really good. These guys are really good at making pizzas. I like the crust. It's not done in a barbecue. Wow, it looks really good. Bit so you can handle it. And I'd say it's time to cut this up. Bravi, bravo. You guys know how to make pizza. Bravissimo. But let's go back to your non-authentic huh? spaghetti in meatballs. Scene. So I've gonna pair this with this uh, Italiano wine. It's uh, from Abruzzo, Gran Sasso, so Italiano wine, yes. You guys make really good pizza, I'm surprised. I never watched that video. And as a non-wine drinker, pretty much red wine all tastes the same to me. <laughs> okay, so you know who goes the authenticity. But, that's what they do. Red meat, red wine. Red meat, red wine, yes. So, we'll give it a shot in this quality vessel. Might as well make a... Nothing has been done proper today, so don't worry about the cup. And now, the moment of truth. Do we want to see these? Here it goes. Let's kind of slice into this. It is tender, it is very tender, but also the knife is huge. So maybe the knife makes it look tender. Can't annoy this, I think. Lord have mercy. It's a meatball spaghetti pie made with fake sauce, fake cheese. Okay. My God, no, no, no. Poor pasta. Look at that poor pasta there, a poor dead pasta. Look at that poor pasta. The sauce as well, did they make love with the ingredients inside? They love. The sauce, did they make love with the ingredients, you know, with the pasta and everything else? They're like stuck together, but they are not connected. That's what I'm talking about. Connection. Ingredients need to connect with each other. Oh, tricky. Look at the fake cheese. Look how fake it is. Spaghetti, they, they need more love. The meat is dry. What do you like about it? What do you like about this? Back on top there, son. There it is. 
check it out. If that's check not the prettiest meatball with spaghetti in it. Come on, man. You're such a great guy. You make amazing pizzas. You're so good with barbecues. Don't, don't tease me. Don't say that. What, what, what's good looking about this? Why does it look good? Look how dry the meat is. You've ever seen, I don't know what is, but here goes. You must be drunk. This is wine. It went straight to your head. Oh, oh what? Oh, what? Italy, if you're listening, you need to do this. Hello, America, if you're listening, this dish has nothing to do with Italy. This dish, maybe it's got to do with you guys, Americans, but it's nothing to do with Italy, okay? Not in this, it is done the wrong way, every single step. The only good thing he did was to use top quality tomatoes, ingredients, nice wine, maybe the good extra virgin olive oil, and the fact that he mixed the, 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 the meat so beautifully. And the knife, I love the stirring with the knife. Everything else was a disaster, terrible. Terrible, even the meat is dry. Not even cooked right, so what are you talking about? This becomes potentially a new national dish. Ma che dici? Of which country? Which country is gonna be proud to present this? You're teasing me, my friend. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm subscribe if you keep going, okay? Don't tease me this way, because it really makes me upset. So you don't have to copy like New York style pizzas and stuff? Wow. Wow, wow, you really believe in this. This is really mean what you just said. Copying New York style pizza. This is close minded at its best. I'm going to unsubscribe to your channel after we, the comment you made. It's so disrespectful. In a world where we have to be politically correct, I didn't want to hear this. I didn't want to hear this, my friend. And I really love it. I love, I love the music you pick. I like everything you do. But coming up with these comments, really, do you need that? You only make people angry. And you make me angry right now. Excellent. You know what? You deserve it. You deserve this. You deserve to eat this crap. You deserve to eat Detroit pizza, whatever you want it. I even gave you compliments. But I'm going to take them back. You really disappointed me. You really offended me. So... Go and eat your New York style pizza. I don't care anymore. Guys, I'm upset and I'm going. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I will see you in the next Vincenzo's Plate reaction video. I'm really angry. Eora, ah, I'm going to unsubscribe. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.